everyone. Um, I think just taking a break away from the um, uh, kind of stop motion or the accelerated videos. Um, I'm doing a little something or something a little bit different uh, regarding the fuel sender. And, um, you know, this is the instructions that come from the, uh, the sling, uh, or the sling company here. And, um, you know, it uses this kind of, uh, it's an older design on the, um, the fuel center. It uses, uh, an ohm, uh, mechanism or resistor that's through this, this piece here. Um, you know, it, this, it probably works okay, but, uh, I had a 210, uh, for a period of time and we took out the old style um, fuel senders uh, in, in favor of some newer ones and um, what we've decided to go to is or what I'm or what we did at that time was we used these brand new cease fuel senders and um, let me get that out real quick been kind of familiar with these cease uh, fuel senders here uh, since we did the, since we had the 210 and um, this is just kind of what the end looks like um, for those of the, you who are interested um, I just called them up and uh, said hey you know I, I, I've used these before in another airplane and uh, the nice part is is the way this mechanism works over this one uh, this is a, a kind of a resistor or a uh, uh, I think it's like an ohm level uh, look down inside here there's there's these contacts that get made inside the um, the unit itself to determine what the uh, the level of fuel in there and on the cease one uh, they don't have anything like that uh, this is this uses a, a magnet uh, uh, some sort to be able to judge the, the, the amount of fuel and I'll include some links in this particular video to their site. Um, they were really super easy to work with. Um, once I got a hold of them, they um, uh, got me in touch with the engineer that uh, does a lot of their builds, and um, they sent me some documentation. Uh, they've got basically this is almost like a, a, a Cirrus fuel sender that they needed, and what they only needed was this depth here because uh, that's the, to the first rib in the tank. And that's effectively what you would be doing. This this section here, if you look at it, it's almost the same depth. And then we'd have to bend this according to the instructions here so that the fuel sender would um, report back the amount of fuel in the tank from within the, the airplane itself. Plus this just looked like a mess. Um, so I didn't even want it. There's some like 12 or 13 different O-rings and washers and a nut and all sorts of different things that have to go in line to that as opposed to There's just this and then the wires. Uh, so there's five screws that this mounts to and um, uh, Then some some extra sealant and whatnot that goes in line this goes through the inch and a half hole that you make in the unit and uh, Then it just slides right in. So what I did was um this is the, the plate that comes from sling here. And um, the idea was is to find center on this piece here because the, five, the inch and a half hole needs to go kind of roughly in this area. Um, and it's really, really close. There's like a, a I mean, maybe a just tiny little bit that it, it's not uh, exactly within the center point of an inch and a half hole here. But that's all I need to drill in order to be able to fit this section here into the tank itself. So what I did is I had some scrap aluminum and um, I drilled a template um, that was exactly the same as this piece here. So I just basically traced out the, uh, the thinner aluminum because uh, I wanted to do a dry, kind of a dry working or dry process on this before I actually started cutting into the actual aluminum piece that uh, comes with the kit. So. Um, I, I worked around the uh, the outside of it. I figured out where all the holes were. Basically, I just tapped them through here as I went around and um, put it into place. And then I drilled the inch and a half hole in there. And you can see there's that one little notch that's just on the just right here, and uh, that's the the opening for the bigger hole here. So it, it's real close in size, and when you center that up. 
Um, the other nice part is, is that when I drew this, I just basically did a line through each uh, opposing point to find center on this particular unit. And that gives me my, an idea of where the center of the hole is at. And then I just took the inch and a half drill bit and cut that out. So at this point in time, all I need to do is find center on this piece here, do the same thing, tap the inch and a half hole in here, and then align the holes for the five that would be on here. And then this will mount to the surface on this part here. These holes are already existing as part of the actual uh, rib itself. And um, I also the, the other part I don't understand is this is the fuel sender, the old fuel sender, and it's apparently this is a standard five point um, set of holes. So I don't understand why they're doing these two little holes to pass through as opposed to these five. But um, yeah, that's, you know, that's what it is. Um, so what happens is now, and I'm, I'll do a quick break here and um, put this in. So this is what the unit looks like when it's just sitting in there. I don't, I don't have this, the five screws holding it in there right now, um, and I'll get that sorted out here as I work through it. Um, but that's what will come out. I'll have the three sending wires here. Um, there's only two on this one. I do know that this works perfectly fine with the Garmin uh, G3X panel, um, because that is what we put in the 210. And um, Cease has their marketing material that says that their accuracy is to within one-tenth of a gallon. Um, so, uh, you know, to me, that, that's kind of a handy thing. Um, so when we look at it actually inside the tank itself, so that's what the fuel sender would look like inside. And then this is their mounting bracket on the back side. It's just sitting in there right now. So there's the five points that receive the other set of screws, and then it actually will clamp on to that center uh, uh, piece that is this unit here. So, and then there's no resistance within this at all. Um, if you've uh, been to Oshkosh, or if you go to Oshkosh uh, this next year, um, they were, they do have a booth and they do have a demonstration on their, um, or within one of the, the main hangers there. Um, but basically this will just go top to bottom within the tank itself and it'll move freely. There won't be anything to uh, cause any sort of resistance or anything like that. Um, there's nothing in, nothing mechanical inside other than the pivot point itself. So, um, that's kind of the reason I... I'm choosing to do a little bit of extra work over this guy here. Um, the, you know, certainly these come with the kit and um, they're fairly inexpensive. I think I looked them up, they weren't terribly um, expensive, but, and it does cost uh, a fair amount to upgrade to this, but the um, ability to be able to know within a tenth of a gallon of how much fuel that's actually in the airplane, um, to me is uh, worth the money spending on getting the upgrade here. So anyway, so that's um, uh, just kind of an overview of what I'm doing so far. I'll take some pictures as I go along and um, show the final results before I put the cap back on the, uh, the, the fuel tank here. Thanks. Okay, I've been working on this just a little bit. Uh, I've got the, uh, this is the uh, a piece of aluminum that I used as just sort of a trial template before I started digging into the actual piece that shipped with the, the kit. So I've got it in here now. Um, and of course, you know, the, the wings, this is the bottom of the wing on this side here. So it's upside down right now, but uh, I've got that in there. One thing I did do was when I put it together, I found, and I'll show you inside, the um, where it's flat on the bottom side, and then I made a note of where that particular screw was at, and then put a, uh, a, a centering point on here so I knew which section I needed to go to in relation to this hole here. So when you look at it on the inside, come in here. Now, this section here, it's not flush here, but if we look at it when it's in the zero fuel position, it's flat on the bottom portion of the skin. 
so uh, it'll sit completely flat on that. And then this is just what it looks like when it's all attached on the inside. Um, so, I mean, because full is, uh, you know, it, it can't go really any further than that, but I wanted to make sure it was nice and flush when it got to the bottom side so that uh, it had at least as much accuracy as I could get on this. So that's, uh, that's what this looks like when it's all together. Um, it's just a little different than uh, the other fuel sender. So th that's the cease. All right, so just kind of showing what the uh, float's gonna do here. Um, even though the fuel tank is pretty much in the 90 degree position from where it'll be on the wing, um, the float still actually floats towards the top in this position as well. So once enough water gets to that float, you'll see it move up to the top. So this is just more of a test of the fuel tank here. Make sure everything's everything sealed. This is what the tank or the, the head on that looks like once it's all done. Everything's torqued down. Uh, they just got to put some torque uh, identifiers on there. But uh, everything's all really. 